Hey guys, Lee here. Today is going to be the unboxing that I promised you guys a couple videos ago of the Da Vinci Earth Friendly Palette curated by Denise Soden. Please go check out Denise's channel if you're interested in very detailed and well put together informational videos about watercolor paints. And yeah, I am really excited about this palette. It's uh, curated to be um, animal friendly and earth friendly so I'm just extremely excited about that so without further ado let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, one quick little caveat though I um, this is going to be a longer video than normal so I'm going to go ahead and try and add timestamps down in the description below for uh, if you want each section. There's going to be an unboxing section and a paint pouring session. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so here's the box. Um, I My husband did accidentally open this thinking that it was something else, but I have not even peeked inside this yet. So um, everything that you see is going to also be my very first time seeing any of these things. So let's just do this, shall we? I can already see that there is some lovely packaging going on with this. Oh wow. Um, okay, so it came with a free pencil case, which I was not expecting. And there's nothing else in the box. So let's go ahead and open her up. So here is the color. The color swatch, uh, the printed color swatch. With all of the colors on it. That's adorable. These come separated, it looks in uh, kind of like a rainbow order into little boxes of three. It's really, really cute. So when I first started my watercolor journey, I went into a bit of a rabbit hole trying to find the perfect palette setup. And what I ended up falling to were the use of these metal palettes that I could actually interchange the pans in. And I'm sure you've seen me using them. They're my main palette, which I've used in recent videos and also a little 12 pan travel palette that you've probably seen in quite a few of my videos. And I actually did have a third palette that I have yet to use and it's the medium size 24 pan palette. And this is very similar to the palette that would have come in the um, Earth Friendly Da Vinci palette. Um, the Big differences being that the Earth Friendly palette has a gray finish and it has a brand, the Da Vinci watercolor brand and Earth Friendly palette printed on the actual tin. And there's a few reasons that I decided not to include the, the pan tin in my purchase. And one being that I already have this one. And if one of the things that I love about this is the fact that it's sustainable and earth friendly, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to purchase in excess something that I already have and therefore do not need. So there's that. 
Um, the other thing is the price difference. So the this set without the pan was $137. And so that's for 24 paints, $137, which is not cheap. It's a good little chunk of money to spend all at once on watercolor paints. With the pan, I want to say the price was close to $160, like $159 or something like that. And this, that would mean that the pan in that set costs about 25 to $30. And you can actually buy a pan on its own for $29 on the DaVinci website. This pan cost me about $10. So, and I did some researching and, and you can find some of them even cheaper than that. So that's something to keep in mind. You can probably find the pan tins a lot cheaper than if you're trying to um, buy it from these larger fancy watercolor brands. So let's go ahead and open up these little guys and we are going to go over each of these colors and then do a little bit of pan pouring. This will be my first pan pouring session on this channel. I figured we can't do a Denise Sodden inspired video without doing a little bit of pan pouring and maybe a touch of swatching, although I think I might leave the swatching to its own video. We'll see. So I'm just going to do a quick little time lapse of me opening all these little boxes up. We'll go ahead and do one just for good measure. Now, I'm not somebody who tends to squeal and scream over things that I love, um, so I might not be the best person to be doing a unboxing video, but I do want to say that I am really excited to be holding these paints. Um, they come in this, um, let's see here, I want to say it's eight, yeah, eight milliliter tubes and they have the light fastness on them, whether or not uh, they're opaque level, their pigment number, and looks like it uses natural gum. Usually that means gum Arabic. So yeah, that's so cute and pretty. And again, none of these have any animal products, no ox gall, no um, uh, unsustainably harvested pigments, which I just love. So my very favorite watercolor brand is Core, and they use something called Aquazol, which is a substitute for ox gall that is vegetarian. So I really like that. It's, it's um, very high quality pan. I just love it. And um, if you've ever heard of Schminke, they are a really high quality professional brand. I've actually never used them because they all pretty much always use Oxgall in their professionally in their professional line of paints. So let me go ahead and tell you, um, I guess, a general overview of my first impressions of just the packaging in it itself. So it's a really nice presentation. Um, I'm going to be honest, and th I know that this is not going to be a shared opinion by most people. 
but I actually don't like the fact that they included this little bag because I don't need it and it's now it's just another thing that I need to worry about finding a home for. That being said, it is a nice canvas bag. It's a really good quality bag. It's just not something that I needed. And I really hate being given things that I don't need. And that's just me. Obviously, it's a nice thing. It's just, I if I had known it was coming in the if I had realized it was coming as part of this package, I probably would have requested that it be left out. Um, in terms of the shipping packaging, I do like that they use paper, so that's consistent with the sustainability and earth-friendly motto and theme of this palette. Now, moving on to the presentation of the paints themselves. I do like how they had them in these cute little cardboard packages separated in color groups of three. So if you were building, you know, a series of palettes, it would be really easy to do that using these little color groupings. Or like say if you wanted to do a 12 pan palette or an 8 pan palette, you could pick one or two tubes from each three color set and that would be a really nice way to get a little bit of everything. So I do like the way that was arranged and I do really like the layout of these colors on this little swatching sheet. Now. If you saw my video where I swatched all of my watercolor paints, you'll see that when I created my palette, I had it arranged in a more of a color wheel kind of a way. And um, this isn't quite like that, but I do like this enough to where I'm probably going to keep it that way. One very minor con about this is I was expecting there to be a watercolor swatch sheet for me to swatch my swatch them myself um, in this, um, just because it was on the picture on the website. But that's not really a big deal. I have plenty of watercolor paper that I can do swatches on, so. Um, it's just a ever so slight disappointment in terms of the presentation of this set of watercolors. So I don't know about you, but I think I am ready to squeeze out some of these paints into my pan here and just look at them. So let's go for it. Alright, so we are going to start with the yellows. Um, one of my cats, just so you know, is annoying right now because he wants dinner, but it's not quite dinner time, so just a little caveat. He might interrupt this a little bit, and um, but I am on a bit of a time crunch, so I'm just going to let it happen. So let's go ahead and take a first look at the actual paint. little bit of binder right there at the top which could mean that uh, the paint has separated a little bit or it, I think that's a pretty common thing though so let's go ahead and get some of this in here looks like it's just a little bubble I'm gonna fill this pretty full on the website it said that each of these tubes would be about three 
half pans worth. And when you look at all of my, my the rest of my paint collection and consider the fact that some of those paints I've had for three or four years now and I'm still not through with them, that might give you some perspective on if you're worried about the price of these, um, it, it, you're probably, like if you bought this set, you unless you paint a lot, you're probably not gonna need to buy more paint for a rather long time. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this in my palette. I'm gonna, again, I'm just gonna have this arranged in the same order as it comes in the um, on the palette. <laughs> so that was Aerolide Yellow. Interesting. And the pigment is um, PY97. And it says it has a good light fastness. doesn't say anything about the opaqueness on that one. So I'm going to assume that that means that it, it's a transparent color. Next we have Hansa Yellow Deep. Ooh, it's very nicely contained. I don't own very, I kind of consider this an orange. We'll have to see how it actually lays out on the paper because sometimes paint will look very different on the paper than it does straight out of the tube. But I kind of view this as an orange. Next we have Pyrrole Red, and I do have another Pyrrole Red from Imgram, which is extremely vibrant, so we'll have to see if this one compares. Next up, we have Alizarin Crimson. That one's really full. Oops. Did, I don't know if you heard that, but that was some air bubbles inside the tube which means it's not as full as it seemed. Not terribly worried about it, but it's not a great thing. Paraline Maroon. I love Paraline Green from Daniel Smith is the one that I currently have. There is a Paraline Green on this palette as well, but I've never tried another color as a Paraline. So we'll see how that goes. I can see that there's some bubbles in this one as well.
Red Rose Deep Quinacridone. Da Vinci Violet. This says it has a very good light fat fastness. I've heard that purples um, in most brands aren't light fast. And I don't know if I don't know if violets and purples kind of fall in the same category. Um, it's a really pretty dark color. In Danthrene Blue. Guys, let me know if this is like boring or relaxing for you. <laughs> uh, this video is definitely going to be a little bit longer than my typical video. And uh, I'm not going to do all my videos like this, but let me know if you like this. Because I, I've been debating whether to do this as a time lapse or to let you really take in the experience with me. Obviously I'm letting you take in the experience with me. But just let me know if you enjoyed it. Because I don't currently have plans to buy any more paints, but um, if I do I'll definitely be doing this again. So I would like to do it in a way that is pleasurable for you guys as much as possible. We've got Permanent Artists Ultramarine Blue. Cerulean Blue Hue, and I was watching a video on it in Liquid Color recently where um, Denise compared a new Daniel Smith palette that was um, kind of similar to her Earth Friendly palette. Um, I just want to know, I just squeezed a lot on this tube and nothing came out, which means that it was filled with air. Just again, just something to take note of. Um, but she was comparing these two palettes, um, which is neither here nor there from my perspective, but she did mention that she put this Cerulean Hue, I guess it's not a 
true cerulean. Um, so I don't know if that means cerulean is a type of pigment that's um, unsustainable to harvest. But you can see here that um, it's not like a single pigment cerulean, it's a dual pigment cerulean hue. And that's what the hue means, is that it's not a true cerulean. So PB15 and PW6. is a pretty looking paint. We've got a phthalo turquoise. I do have a, another phthalo turquoise, which is by Windsor and Newton. Newton. <laughs> Windsor and Newton's phthalo turquoise is a really beautiful color. I'm really excited to try this one because Wonder Newton isn't my favorite brand. They do use Oxgall in their paints, so if this is a viable replacement for that, I'm really excited. If it compares in vibrancy and brilliance, then I'll be extremely happy. And I and I will do a color comparison for you guys if you like. some of this on my hands and it does have a little bit of a tacky texture. I'm not worried about having this on my hands because these are all non-toxic which is a really cool thing about this palette but I am gonna go wash my hands real quick. When I put water on my fingers it was like a whoosh of color all over the place so that's reassuring in terms of the pigment load. And if you're wondering, um, if you didn't, if you didn't know, um, a lot of, there are quite a few paint pigments that are commonly used out there that are toxic. Um, so that's really important to be aware of if you're going to use watercolor paints. Maya. So here we have a phthalo green. wants me to feed her. I don't know if you can hear her purring. She's a very purry kitty. Let's say hi to Maya, shall we? Come on, Maya. Back to business. Usually I do um, utilize the extra pan space in my palettes, um, but for now we're just <gasps> now we're just gonna leave it at the um, twenty four pans, and that gasp that you just heard was um, my cat just clawed me so I'm about to go put her in the bedroom. I would have edited that out but the video program that I use it's just an app on my phone. I don't actually know how to edit from the middle of a video only from the end and because I'm doing this all as one take and just pausing so that it's one video clip. I 
Um, I don't feel comfortable editing it out um, just because I don't really know how to do that without accidentally deleting all of my footage, which I've done several times now. So anyway, back to the swatching or the, the pan, pan pouring. Um, we are on to our second row and we have got a permanent artist's raw umber. And I just realized all of these say permanent artists on them. So that would imply to me that they're all light fast. It looks like they either have an excellent or very good light fastness rating. I don't specifically know what that means. Like I don't know how many hours of sunlight it would take for the, the um, paint to fade. We've got Burnt Umber. Violet Iron Oxide. Kind of intrigued by this color. Indian Red. I'm wondering if that is referring to the country India or Native Americans. was clearly kind of stretchy tacky. Burnt Sienna. And I'm looking at this swatching um, video footage length and it's already 
21 minutes long, which lets me know that this is going to be a really, really long video. So I think I am going to go ahead and stop this section of the real-time video and do the rest as a little time lapse, and I'll still read out the names of the paints as I go. And there you have Denise's Earth Friendly Da Vinci Watercolor Palette all laid out in my little tin. And I think I'm going to end the video there because it is a lot of footage already. Um, and I don't want this to take forever. So what I'm going to do is let this dry overnight and do a color swatching slash demo video where I do a little study using these paints and that'll be more of a first impressions in terms of the way that the paint handles and after I've used them for a little bit longer um, we'll say a month I will do a proper review of these paints. So um, my next video, um, I, I do have one video that's gonna be between this one and the swatching video, and that's gonna be my final video for Zeke's Lunchbox April Art Prompt Challenge. And I hope to have that one for you tomorrow. Um, I do have uh, some work uh, some official work to do tomorrow, so it might be the day after, but as of right now, my plan is to do the Zeke's Lunchbox wrap-up video and then the Da Vinci swatching video, so stay tuned for those. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and go ahead and subscribe to my channel Go ahead and comment down below if you enjoy this style of video that is longer, a little bit more um, sensual maybe even, uh, or relaxing, uh, versus the sped up time lapse with the music behind them. Or if you like a mix of both and you'd like to see um, an, a continuation of both of those types of videos. I, I still plan on doing both types of videos regardless, but I might lean one way or the other if any of you have a specific preference. So if you do, go ahead and leave those in the comment section below. Anyway, again, like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye.